Welcome to part three of my forestry mod tutorial series. If you are new here, my name is Javier and I aim to give you a comprehensive and easy to digest tutorial into the Minecraft modded experience. If you guys do have any further questions or there's something I may have missed, you can either join the Discord where there'll be a link below. We have a whole section dedicated to modded Minecraft or feel free to leave a comment on YouTube and I will try my best to answer any queries you may have. This is part three of the forestry series and today we're gonna to be looking at bee and tree breeding. If you have watched part one of this series, you'll know that there are seven types of starting hives and a lot of useful items regarding bees. If you haven't seen that one already, I would suggest watching it first before this one. However, I will touch again on some of the bee related items here. So firstly, I'm just gonna go through the hives that you can find out in the overworld again. So we have the forest hive, the meadows hive, the modest hive, the tropical hive, the ender hive, the wintry hive, and the marshy hive. And these are all the overworld hives that you can find and these are going to be your starting bees. Again for more in-depth analysis on all of these where you can find them etc I would recommend watching my first video in this series. Some basic items so the scoop this is what you're going to use to break the hives and collect the bees if you don't use the scooping you just use your hand you're going to get nothing basically and you're going to get stung so that's going to waste your time then we have the bee smoker if you use this on a hive before breaking it with the scoop the bees will be calm and they won't attack you we have the portable analyzer we're going to be using that later this is for analyzing your bees trees and butterflies then we have an analyzer, which is a powered version of this that you can supply with liquid honey and you can pump in the bees and um, it will, you know, analyze them en masse. However, it's still advisable to have a portable one because it's easier to actually look at what you're looking at. Then we have the habitat locator. This is a really awesome tool where you can find the nearest appropriate biome for the bee that you put in it. The grafter and the proven grafter is when you use these on leaves on a tree, you will always get a sapling when breaking a leaf. So super useful there. Then we have the frames and I'll get into these when we look at the apiaries, but these actually improve the production of your bees and slightly reduce the genetic decay of ignoble bees. So I just wanted to look at the habitat locator really quickly with you guys. So you can put in a drone here and a honey drop. It will push this out down here and then you can see which habitats that this bee likes to live in, then what you could do is hold out your habitat locator and it will show you towards where the nearest applicable biome is. If it can't find one, for example, right now, because we're in a super flat world, it will just spin forever. So if you're in the nether and you need a meadows biome, for example, it will spin around forever because there are no meadows biomes in the nether. Uh, this is the analyzer. So again, you put your drone in here and you can pump these in through piping or whatever, pump in some honey, and then this will output the analyzed bees. However, you can't actually fully look at the analysis of the bee here without the portable analyzer. So I wish it did have more functionality. It's actually a bit annoying. But if we look in our portable analyzer, same again, put a honey drop in here and an unanalyzed bee, or in our example, we've already got an analyzed one. And if you have already analyzed that exact bee, you will not need to put in honey again. You can just put the analyzed bee straight in. You can shift on the bee, whether you're in the analyzer or not, and you can see an overview. So we can see it's got a shorter life, it's slowest worker, the temperature and humidity are normal, and it has no tolerance either way of that, and it likes flowers. So in the first slot here, this is general information about your bee. You can see the active and inactive type of bee. So when you start breeding them, they may have an inactive one that with breeding, you're gonna either want or not want to come over into the active. And that's actually the bee that you're gonna get is in the active. So the way to think of it is with like parents with people, when you have a, a mom and a dad, and they conceive a child, that child will actually inherit genetics from both parents. But if your dad has blonde hair and your mum has brunette hair, you may have either coloured hair. You're not going to have both. And it's the same with this. So an inactive trait could be blonde hair, and then it may go to active, and that's the type of bee you'll get. Hopefully that's a good example of how that works. So here you've got the species, and it is forest. The lifespan is shorter, and... The lifespan means how long will it live before running out of cycle. So if you're trying to mutate bees, you actually want a very short lifespan because 
the shorter lifespan means it's going to turn over to a new life cycle, which means producing a new princess and drones, and therefore a chance of mutating, quicker. Whereas if you're using this bee for production, then you're going to want a longer lifespan so it can produce more combs and honey before it dies off and produces a new life cycle. Pollination is how quickly it will pollinate the surrounding area. So you can see here, these bees, there are some flowers, and what it will do is it'll actually make more flowers appear, for example, like here and here. Um, you can actually see this one over here. I didn't place this one. That would have been through pollination. And you can see this kind of, um, uh, almost looks like mini little fireworks, like there, these little particle effects. And these are actually from bees pollinating. Then it shows you the flower type and the actual type of flower that this bee wants. So for example, this forest drone would like flowers. And if there's no flowers nearby, it won't do anything. The fertility is how many drones you will get when the life cycle ends. So from this bee, we'll get three drones. The territory is how large of an area around the hive it will pollinate. And the effect is the actual positive or negative effect that this bee will have on you when you are near it. This is then the environment that the bee likes. So it likes a normal climate. It has no tolerance either side of this. So if it had a plus one tolerance, that means it will like a normal climate, but it will actually work with a slightly hotter or colder climate. And that can go either way. Same with humidity, diurnal, does the bee work in the day or not? Nocturnal, will it work in, at night time or not? Tolerant flyer, will it work when it's raining or not? Cave dwelling, does it need access to the sky above the hive or not? Then we have the possible produce. So here we can see that this bee will produce you a honeycomb. Then we can see the possible mutations and you'll have to work these out yourself through bee breeding. And then finally is the actual classifications of the bee. And I do hear these are exceptionally accurate. Another thing we have here is the apiarist gear. Now you can get this in a carpenter and this will protect you from any negative effects that bees may have. That doesn't mean when you're harvesting these bees from the, the, co the hives, it means that any negative effect that some bees, which we'll get onto later, may actually have when you're near them, a full set of this will actually protect you. There is the escritoire, which you can put in a drone and do this annoying matching game, and you may get some a piece of notepaper that will tell you some more about bees, and that was also covered in part one of this video. There's also the habitat former. You put some either lava, crushed ice, or water in here, depending on what you're trying to do, and some power, and then you can pick to try and actually terraform, basically, the local area into the, the right temperature and humidity. And again, I went through that in my first video. So once you've actually got your bees, you are going to get a princess and a drone. You can put these into an apiary or a bee house. Now, there are a few differences between an apiary, apiary or a bee house. So the bee house is a simpler version of the apiary. This is made with some planks, a comb in the middle, and three slabs on top. And this bee house will, for one, you can't add any frames in here to increase production. And also, bees will not mutate in a bee house. So if you have a certain type of bee and you don't want it to mutate at all, you can use the bee house to stop that from happening. However, it doesn't have any frames, so it will actually produce less. The apiary which is made with some planks, slabs on top, and an impregnated casing, which is made with eight logs in a carpenter with some seed oil. This has three slots here where you can add frames. You put your princess and your drone in here, which will turn into a queen. Any excess drones will also stay here. And this is where you're going to get the output. So, like, there you have it, straight on camera. Uh, a honeycomb being produced, which is awesome. You can also, if you have the analyzer, actually click this button here and supply a bee, etc. So you've got the queen here, or you can choose the drones that are here. And you can see it's highlighting which it's using. And you can see, if you have some honey in here, all about the bee and what it has, again, possible produce and mutations. So it's actually really cool without taking them out of the apiary. You can actually see the analysis of the bees here, which is awesome. So the apiary also has free slots available for frames. Now, what these do is they slow down the genetic decay of ignoble bees. When you're out in the wild breaking those hives, you will either get a pristine princess or a ignoble princess. Now, the ignoble bees will genetically decay very, very, very slowly and eventually die off, whereas pristine 
will not. They are genetically perfect. So if you can, always try and get the pristine ones. And they're not very rare. I would say it's approximately a 70-30 or 60-40 kind of ratio on getting those ignoble versus pristine. So I always do try and get the pristine ones. Another tip, if you are looking for pristine princesses, I've noticed that in villages, they only seem to have pristine bees. So if there is a forestry house in a, in a villager village, check the chests and the hives. Pretty much guaranteed, they will always be pristine. I've noticed that. So go and raid some villages and you'll get an easy supply of some pristine bees and also some rarer species as well sometimes. So that's a really good tip, I think. The untreated frames, which are made with eight sticks and a piece of string, will do two point will do two times the amount of production and reduce genetic decay to 0.9% and they have a durability of 80. You then have the impregnated frame, which is made with eight impregnated sticks, which is two logs and some seed oil in a carpenter. They will double production again and they have a durability of 240 and genetic decay is brought down to 0.4. So you can mix and match these and they do stack in here as well. The Proven Frame, which can only be found in Villages or traded with Villages, has, again, two times production. The production is the same on all of these. However, the genetic decay on that is 0.3. So it does affect the genetic decay, but the production is the same on all of them. They have different durabilities. Durability on the basic untreated frame is 80. Impregnated is 240. Proven is 720. Another quick tip on here as well. You can enchant them with Unbreaking or Mending. To make them last longer. Now, to actually breed your bees, you're going to want to get, for example, a Meadows Princess and put that in the top slot here, and a Forest Drone, so something of a different breed, if you're looking to mutate them, that is, and then we're going to want to put that in here. Now, what that is going to do is it's going to make a queen. For example, here we've now got a Meadows Queen. Now, if we analyze this bee, You can see here that the active and inactive genome on this Meadows Queen is both Meadows. So that forest drone we put in did not then give us an inactive and it didn't give us an active. Eventually, if you keep doing that, you're going to mutate the bee. And there are a few different branches of bees that you can get by breeding different types of bees together in the way I just showed you. So you can see behind me all of the different branches of the bees that you can actually breed. And we are gonna go through that in next week's video. And I'm gonna go over every single bee and how to breed them, the produce they give, and all of that good stuff. And then we're also going to go through all of the tree breeds and how to get those as well. So thanks for watching, guys. Again, feel free to join the Discord. There will be a link below. And if you do have any questions or is anything you think I've missed or you want covered in a bit of extra detail, feel free to just give me a comment below. Or again, join the Discord and we have a dedicated channel in there. Thanks for watching and I will see you in next week's video.